my name is Kayla Rundle and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am back at GPI, I am in the engine building room and I have my teacher John who's the professional here at Guatney Performance. He is the one, the master, to put together all the engines. Today I am gapping my own piston rings. So we come over here and we have all the different style of rings laying out on the table and John just walked me through on how to gap them myself. So we have the very first set of rings and there are eight, eight rings for each of the three layers of rings. So for the first set, there's like tiny little details. You'll see like a, a little M right here and excuse my greasy nails, M from the Molly Pistons, that means that goes upwards. So when you put the pistons in, the connecting rods are down here and the piston sits here. So we always wanna make sure when we're putting this in the cylinder that that is facing upwards. So we have a couple tools that we are using. There is this piece right here, which sits in the cylinder straight down, just like that. And that little tool basically just makes the ring sit completely flush within it. And then we also have this little measuring gapping tool, which this doesn't do anything. This is just a measuring tool. And it has all these different numbers to test how big of a gap you are making on the rings itself. And then I also have a flashlight so we can shine it from underneath to see where we sand it down the rings, if it's perfectly straight, because when there's a light shining through it, you'll see if there's any little mistakes or if it's like slightly crooked on it to perfectly make it straight. So we are using this machine right here. We have to put the ring right in here and slide it on the sander until it hits zero. When it hits zero, it should be touching the sander. And then we do a certain amount every single time and then you want to bring it over to this polisher slash sander and you want to make sure that all the edges are kind of polished down on the sides so they're not sharp because if the edges of the rings are sharp because obviously when you sand it down it'll be like a perfect 90 degree angle on every single edge. If you put these rings back into the cylinder it will end up scratching it which you don't want because that creates some like metal dust and little little guys that we don't want in the engine. So, and you also don't want to scratch it. Least amount of problems possible is the best. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys, walk you through <laughs> how to gap the rings. I just did the four on the other side. It was my first time, so they did take me a while. So now I'm understanding it a little bit better. And we want to start in slow sections. So smaller sections is better because you don't want to just sand off, you know, the entire gap because if you mess up, then you can't use them because you don't want to make them too big. I'm gonna start with the first ring. We have to sand, we're gonna try sanding five from each side. So we're gonna start small. Since we're starting on an entire different face of the engine block, these rings could be different from the other side I just did. So I'm gonna place it in this machine and place it directly against the wall, which it has this little device in here. So we know it's perfectly flat. It's at the same spot as every single ring we do. So the measurements are never off if you press it all the way. And then I tighten it down, pull the little safety wall back to where we just made sure it was flat. And we make sure the measuring tool is below zero. Otherwise, if it's above zero, as soon as you put this into the sander, it will chop off however much you're over instantly. So it's better to start doing small amounts at a time. So it's below zero, and then I put it all the way down. And I push it more towards the sander so I know I'm at zero. And then I turn the machine all the way until it hits zero, which at zero, it should hit the sander. Now it's perfect. And I constantly move it back and forth on the machine just so I don't ruin the sanding disc itself because if I just keep it on one place, it might create like a little dip in the sanding disc and we want that disc to be completely flat. Otherwise it might bite like an area of the ring so if you keep moving it back and forth, it dissipates the heat, make sure the sanding disc is fine, and also make sure the ring is fine. Just take my time until it all the way it hits five. All right, so that hit five on one side, so I'm gonna take this off. Then I bring it over to the polisher, and I wanna sand down every little edge just so I get rid of the sharpness and this is more of a feel thing because if it feels sharp then it'll probably scratch your block which you don't want. So I go around and just polish off every little one of the four edges on the ring. 
And you do have to be careful with how much you're bending the ring because it can snap because they're really gentle. So I like to take my time doing this because I'm not a pro, but we're doing this. <laughs> And that feels so much better. Now I'm going to do the other side of the ring, which is on this gap. So you can see, I don't know if you can see the little details on this ring that I just did and I sanded down the edges. So you'll see that it's kind of shiny right there versus the one I haven't touched is still black right there. five on the other side that we haven't touched yet. I'm gonna take this off and put the little safety down. Then I'm gonna polish the edges again. Then once I gapped both sides, I'm gonna put this inside and I kind of hold it in the back and kind of squeeze the ring together and shove it in there. Then I take my little tool, which will make the ring perfectly straight and put it straight down and kind of make sure the ring sits flush with the tool because if it's slightly angled the gap will be off <laughs> and then now that knowing that we took 0.05 off of it then the tool should realistically measure at 0.01 so 10 I'm going to shove this in perfectly straight 1.5 all right, it's getting close. I'm gonna try 18. <laughs> this might just be perfect. And this hit 18 with just five off each side. <sighs> Got lucky with that one. So I knew before touching this side of the block that these rings would be different than the other side because when I took 0 .05 off of each side of the rings, it ended up only being 10, but with this one, I took 0 .05 off each side and it hit perfectly at 18. So I definitely need to start taking off less for this side. As soon as I shove the tool in there, it's like perfect. I completed the whole first set of rings and I laid them out on this table next to me in order because you wanna keep each ring for every particular cylinder because every cylinder could be a little bit different. So we number them one through eight and keep them over here. Then I did the second set of rings on the pistons there's like three layers basically of the rings and I was asking what the rings do and they all have a different purpose. The top ring is the one that gets the hottest so it is the strongest material so I was definitely noticing a difference when I was sanding it down. It's kind of harder to sand down and get to the particular number I wanted for how big the gap was. And then the second material is a little bit softer of a material because it won't get as hot within the cylinder, um, but that's the ring that basically scrapes down the metal in the center. So rings are a wear item, but it has like this shininess. And so this outer layer of the ring, it's all this like dark material. So over time in the engine block, it'll actually wear. So this whole outer surface, as it's going up and down in your cylinder on the piston, it will wear down that like coating on the metal. So you know your rings are fully um, worn when that color of the metal is completely worn down. I asked, I was like, well, what if I wanna add boost to this application later down the road? Do I have to switch out the pistons and rings and everything? And they said that probably after a year or two, I would be able to add boost because for boosted applications, it requires a larger gap. But since the rings are a wearable item, over time, they do kind of move outwards just because this out exterior surface wears down. So when it wears down, this becomes thinner, making the rings come outwards, making the gap bigger. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. So when the gap's bigger, it's better for boost. The reason we are gapping the rings when they're in the cylinder, there is a little amount of room because these rings are at room at this room temperature right now, which I don't even know how hot it is, probably 75 in here and when it's inside getting hot on the piston moving up and down metal does expand and so we are measuring how much room the metal basically has to expand 
which is 18 out of a thousandth of an inch. So 0 0.018 is the gap, and that's how much room it has to expand. All right, so now we have the third set of rings. <laughs> I've only done two sets of rings in the last like five hours. Well, at least now we're putting on the rings onto the pistons and we have a total of five different rings and we need to get, I think, six rings onto the pistons. We take the set of rings first, which has like a little nipple on the ring. We want the nipple down or you want to put the nipple on top of where the wrist pin is, where it's connected. Hold that there and then set it inside there and work the way all the way around it until the end is above the piston still. Then we take the flat head and we want to shoot it all the way down in the little bottom layer because the spring is the tightest so it will scratch the piston. Okay. Then once that clips in, we want to press it down towards the bottom so we can fit the oiling rings on top of this one. So now we grab an oiling ring this guy. And then these little oiling rings are pretty easy to set into the piston. It's super flexible. And get it in there. Then we take the other little oiling ring and we want to inset it underneath the ring we just put in. But we want the end of the ring to be set off to the right of where we just were. Perfect. Now we grab another oiling ring and then offset it to the other side of where we just put the other ring, which is on this side. Sweet. And that is the bottom layer of the rings. Now we have the second one, which we're on piston four. So the ones that we gapped yesterday, we put a number of which one. You don't want to mix up which piston goes in what cylinder because the how we measured it and the gap will be different. So you want to make sure those are all the same. So that's why I labeled it with four. Once I get these rings apart, I want to find the shafford edge. And then there's like a little M on the ring and we want the M to be upwards. Slam it down.